Love Muffins. It's me, Keisha. I'm here with this week's All T All Shade Power Season 3 Episode 8 Review. Start off this episode with Tommy in a warehouse on a cot, bloodied and bruised, honey. He is fucked up from that beat down Milan's men gave him on last week's episode. You see Milan, old fine ass. Standing next to him with a motherfucking killer German Shepherd ready to attack. Milan has decided he's going to let Tommy live for now. And that he's going to let him go. And But later on they're going to meet back up so they can discuss a few things. Mike meets up with Hugo to find out where exactly Lobos is. He's, he tells Hugo that the fans are looking for an accomplice. Meaning the two of them. So they can never meet up again. He asks Hugo for the phone that he uses to call him so he can confiscate it. Hugo then decides... Uh, that he is He-Man, honey, and yokes Mike up and pushes him up against his car, and he tells Mike that he needs some money and a motherfucking plane ticket so he can get the fuck out of Dodge, and that until then, he will not be getting any kind of phone from him. <laughs> then we cut to Tommy. He's back in his crib, and he's sitting on his little leather sectional and shit, and he's drinking and thinking when Ghost comes in, like, nigga, where the fuck have you been at? I've been hitting you up all night. You ain't been answering your phone. And then... Ghost notices all the fucking bruises and shit he got all of his face and on his neck and shit. He's like, what the fuck happened to you, my nigga? Tommy tells him about what Milan did to him since he did not get rid of Cal Callahan like he told him to. Ghost is like, fuck, that nigga came to my crib last night and threatened to kill my motherfucking kids. Like, we are in a pinch, honey. Ghost then tells Tommy that the feds found Lobos' body and Tommy says to him, I ain't surprised. Are you? That's because you fucked up the plan. I'm like, Tommy, I'm here with you, boo-boo. Ghost then tells Tommy that the feds know whoever killed Lobos had inside information and that they think it's Angela. Ghost asks Tommy if Hugo gave him the name of the inside man. Tommy says no, but that he's been blowing his phone up to probably set up a meeting so he can kill him. Ghost says, go ahead and set their meeting up so they can find out who the leak is. Tommy then says, why? For Angela? No, Ghost. Fuck that. Ghost says to him, no, for us. We're connected. If she goes down, we go down. Tommy then thinks about it. It's like, fuck. Okay, I'll set up the fucking meeting, but I don't like this shit because I don't like that punk ass bitch. He switched to Angela and she's on the phone with someone from the Odette Hotel who has sent her over the surveillance footage from the day Ghost checked into the hotel. So she sees footage of when Jamie supposedly went on a run and returns to the uh, hotel. So now she has all the evidence that she needs that he did kill Lobos. We see Ruiz, his lawyer, Greg and Sex, they're all in a conference room and they're talking about this whole plea deal they had for Ruiz if he gave up information on Lobos. But since Lobos is dead, that deal is finito, finished. But Greg is like, look, bitch, <laughs> if you can give me some inside information on goals, then maybe we can work something else out. Ruiz is like, you couldn't even protect Lobo, so how the fuck you gonna protect me? Hell no, fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. I'm the fuck out of here. So Dre look cute ass, look Tony the Tiger looking ass, is in Ghost's office. I'm like, everybody can just be in Ghost's office when he ain't there, like... What kind of boss are you? Dre was just looking like a whole bag of money. And I was like, give me a piece. So Ghost comes in and Dre says to him, that Tatiana bitch is still alive. And they was in your crib like it was nothing. Like, what the fuck? Like, we, who I got to run up on? Just let me know. Dre asks Ghost, what is your plan? What are we going to do? Ghost tells Dre that Milan knows everything about him. So now he has to learn everything about Milan. And until then, they're not going to make any moves. Dre then tells him about Ren and Stimpy from across the way. They own the other club across the street and how they got the deal with Karen. Of course, Ghost is pissed. So he leaves out of the office. And when the coast is clear, Dre then texts Kanan, you right, Milan got Ghost spooked. So as Ghost is leaving out the club, he spots one of Milan's men at his bar drinking and smoking a cigarette. So I put two and two together after I rewatched last week's episode that the cigarettes that Milan and his men smoke also has a connection to that tattoo on his inner arm that they showed when they did that car scene last week. So when Milan's man walks away, Ghost then comes over and picks up the pack of cigarettes and puts it in his pocket. 
Tommy then meets with Hugo in this abandoned ass warehouse. I mean, these niggas know where all the fucking warehouses at. So Hugo walks up on Tommy with a gun and says, you double crossed us. Ghost then steps in behind Hugo with a gun to his head. Tommy then takes Hugo's gun. Hugo says you were supposed to kill him. Tommy says, uh, oh, I guess I forgot. <laughs> Ghost asks Hugo for their inside connect because they think whoever it is betrayed Lobos and that when they find him, they'll kill him. You know, steady covering their ass and pretend like they ain't do shit. Hugo doesn't budge. Then Tommy asks him, I mean, have you ever been set on fire? Because I heard that it smells a lot like bacon. <laughs> Hugo then says, I'm not done with my inside leak. When I'm done with him, I'll give you the info. So goes like, fuck that. Come on, bring his ass. We about to have a long night of torturing this motherfucker till he give us information that we want. So as they're walking, Hugo, like his boss Lobos, gets to talking mad shit to Tommy. Like, nigga, fuck your dog. That's why I killed that motherfucker. I bet your bitch was mad when she came in the house and the dog was motherfucking dead. You a bitch. Fuck you. And Tommy fucking loses his shit and just gets to bust. And he's like, pow, 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 pow. So as he's shooting the fuck out of Hugo in his back, Ghost is like, Tommy, no! What the fuck are you doing? No! Shit, Tommy, man, no! So Hugo is dead to the motherfucking bed. <laughs> Ghost says to Tommy, Tommy, what the fuck? You could have got information out of him. Now, now we ain't got squat because you can't fucking control yourself. Tommy says, I can control myself just fine. He has to go. Fuck Angela. Tell your bitch not to talk if they step to her, and I'm gonna keep this gun. <laughs> so he leaves, and Ghost is looking at him like, this nigga hurt. Ghost then searches Hugo's pockets and finds the phone that he uses to call Mike. At first, I thought they were gonna kill Mike off, but now that Angela is going to find out that he is inside leak, she's gonna use that to her advantage and turn his ass in, and he's gonna fucking go to jail behind this shit. And I believe Angela is then gonna take his place in the motherfucking precinct and become the new head nigga in charge. Angela, Sax, and Greg are informed that Lobos was killed at close range by one set of bullets while he was subdued, and that it seemed like it was something personal because it was so up close. But the gag is he was captured by two people because there was two sets of motherfucking footprints. So Angela is shook and Greg's like, I know it was that fucking nigga and that fucking ginger. I know it was the two of them. I just know it. I knows it. We see Ghost in his office and he takes Dre and tells Dre to keep to take Tariq to go shoot ho hoops and to keep him far the fuck away from truth. So the next thing we know, he sits his phone down. He was like, you know what? You know, last minute I had to find somebody to pick up my kid. What's up with you? And then we see MJ sitting across from him. The whole girl that went got her a fresh blowout, a fresh good flat iron, honey. She had to come see Mr. St. Patrick. Look at her motherfucking Sunday's best. She asks him about his relationship with Angela. And she tells him that she thinks he used Angela to help me kill his supplier, Felipe Lobos. She offers him immunity if he testifies against Angela. Go says, he don't know what the fuck she talking about, girl. Like, uh, you are wasting my damn time, honey. I could have been at my damn son's school picking him up. But you instead got me in here on this bull shit. MJ says to him, you were living with her. You paid our rent, right? And then hands this nigga receipts. And I was like, I knew that motherfucking rent check was going to come back to bite his dumb ass. So he says to him, you use her classified information to commit capital murder. Turn her in, Mr. St. Patrick. And then she says to him, did AUSA Angela Valdez give you information on Felipe Lobos? And go sits there and then he says... And who is Felipe Lobos again? <laughs> so we see Tasha get off the elevator with her motherfucking purse on her damn crook of her arm like always. And she spots Angela in the motherfucking waiting area. She says to her, you keep showing up here in the middle of the day like it ain't nothing. Ain't you got a goddamn job? I do. Putting murdering drug dealers in jail. What do you do? And I would see like, see, she wouldn't have been able to get that off on me. She would not have been able to get that one off on me. But okay, I digress. Angela says, Jamie's alibi for the Lobos murder will hold up. You won't say a word, but what about Tommy? Where was he that day? How would I know? I'm not his fucking babysitter. Expect the official visit from the FBI. If Tommy's innocent, his alibi better hold up, whatever it is. And then Tasha gets spooked and she says, I think Tommy was with his mother that day on Long Island. 
And then Angela leaves and Tasha then calls Tommy and spills the tea so he can know what the fuck is going on. And I was like, I'm just so tired of them allowing this bitch to run up on Tasha at her motherfucking crib like it's Gucci. Since Courtney and Kim don't want them to physically fight, I feel like at this point, Tasha, you check the fuck out that hoe. Like, bitch, you in the same motherfucking boat as me. You know who the fuck this nigga is. Let's not pretend like you don't know who the fuck my husband is, bitch, and what the fuck he do for a living. So, bitch, you can't come over and question me like your ass ain't accomplice as well. If you don't take your old lanky ass the fuck home, sitting up here looking like how with the motherfucking duck, bitch, if you don't get your ass on some goddamn work, I slap the dog shit out of you, girl. Woo! Tommy then meets with Milan at his warehouse, and it's filled with prescription medication. As he's walking in, Tasha sends him a text message saying, we got a motherfucking problem, my nigga. So Tommy asks Milan how he plans on moving all of this shit. Their plan is they'll place false purchase orders from a medical company so everything is legit on paper. Then they'll set up a depot, like a retail location, so customers can come get their fix. Tommy laughed like, this is the dumbest motherfucking idea I've ever heard of. He tells Milan's right-hand man, Igor, or whatever the fuck his name is, that pill poppers and street junkies are two motherfucking different animals. And that pill poppers are on the higher end of things. And you got to be mobile about that shit. Milan asks him, well, what would you do then? And Tommy tells him that they should set it up where they have couriers so that the pills can show up to people's doorsteps. And Milan is fucking impressed. Because I was actually watching on Viceland the other night on the dark web. A lot of people are buying drugs on the dark web now. And it's basically being sent through the uh, U.S. Postal Service to these people's houses. Because you know here in the United States we cannot uh, tamper with someone's mail unless you have a warrant. So people are straight up getting cocaine, heroin, any kind of pills they want on the dark web sent to their home. This shit is fucking crazy. It's like the new wave of selling drugs. So I like that they incorporated that into the show. I thought that was genius. So Dre is waiting at Tariq school when he gets a call from Kanan. Kanan tells him they need to rap real soon. And Dre was like, all right, I'll hit you up later. Then we switch to Angela at Katie's house questioning her about Tommy's whereabouts the day Lobos was murdered. Katie covers for him, of course, but Angela is just drilling her motherfucking questions. Like, bitch, what you eat? Where you was at? When did you take a piss? What was on the television? Can you tell me what was on the television? What time was on? And so she catches Katie up in a lie about Tommy going to get a pizza because earlier she had stated that he never left the house. And so... Tommy then comes in and says, no, I only left the house to get the pizza. And then he says, Angela, sit the fuck down because me and you about to talk home, girl, because you have really been pushing it. You have been trying your motherfucking luck. It's like, Tommy, just choke her. Just choke her. Just choke her out. God damn it. Just choke the shit out that bitch. Dre and Tariq are playing basketball when Kanan just shows the fuck up out of nowhere like he Jesus. And Dre looks at him like, damn, I could swear you got a motherfucking GPS tracking system on me because how the fuck you know where the hell I was at? And I want to know how the hell he know where he was at. So Kanan says to Dre, so that's go son, huh? What's his name? So, so Dre nervously tells him his name. He's like Tariq. So Kanan asks Tariq, who taught you how to shoot hoops like that? And Tariq says, my friend Sean until he died. Kanan tells him his name is Slim and that he knew Sean too. He asked Tariq, you know, can I, you know, shoot a couple hoops with you? And Tariq's like, sure, I don't give a fuck. Like, come on. I'm just going to say I told y'all. I'm just going to tell you I told y'all right now that Kanan was going to be able to get to Tariq. Told y'all that on my prediction video before the motherfucking season even started. Told y'all, y'all gonna start listening to me. I'm not a national bestseller all over nothing. But okay, I digress. I ain't gonna go up too much. So Angela and Tommy are sitting down in his mother's living room. And Angela says to Tommy, I know Jamie killed Lobos. His alibi checks out, but you need to get your story straight with Kate or we're all fucked. And I'm like, I love how Angela got so much motherfucking bass in her voice when her back is against the wall. But ain't, ain't nobody featuring you, Miss Girl. Like, we see all the way through that bullshit. Girl, sit down, Angela. So, Tommy says, I don't know what you're talking about. But I don't take orders from you. And Angela says, listen, I don't like you either. But we're all on the same fucking side now. Get your mother in line. And two bad things didn't work out between you and Holly. If she was still around, you, you would have had an airtight alibi. We questioned that girl for 24 hours and she didn't say a fucking word. And then Tommy is looking at her like, oh, I want to stab this bitch. And so he says, you ain't the inside guy, but you told go something, did you? 
So now you scared out your goddamn mind. It was dumb to come here, Angie. What if you were followed? Trust me. Stay cool. If you don't, you and Ghost gonna need his and her jumpsuits. And she looking like, we would look cute in the color orange together. We really would. Orange is a really good color on me. <laughs> Kanan and Tariq are shooting hoops. And Kanan tells Dre to go fetch them something to drink. And Dre is kind of scared because he don't want to leave Tariq alone with Kanan. But he has no choice. So he scurries off to go get them something to drink. So... Kanan then says to Tariq, you want to go play hoops sometime one-on-one? -on -one? And Tariq tells him, yeah, that's cool, like, whatever. So, Dre comes back with the sodas, and he tells Tariq, no, we got to go. And so, as they're leaving, Kanan peeps Tariq's school logo on his on his little bag or whatever. And I was like, here we go. Here we motherfucking go. So, Ghost gets a text message from another security team confirming that there aren't any bugs in the truth offices. So Milan comes and tells him that it's time for a meeting to expand to the next level. Ghost is like, I'm busy right now, but girl, I'm going to get back to you later. <laughs> Once again, thinking that he's in control. So he goes to turn a corner and he sees all the motherfucking head niggas in the drug game sitting in the middle of his damn club. And he is like, what in the fuck is going on, Jesus? Tommy is there, Callahan is there, Chin is there, everybody and one of the new characters that is going to be a main character on the show, that little tall, fine little Puerto Rican dude with the low haircut, he's going to be a permanent cast member as of right now, so we'll be seeing more of him. They're all there at the damn club. Tommy walks up to Ghost, and Ghost says to Tommy, what the fuck? I don't get no heads up. Tommy says, I couldn't make a move. Ego was on me all day. So then Ruiz walks in and everybody is shocked. Everybody looking like this nigga done risen from the motherfucking dead. Ghost is shook. Tommy is shook. Hell, even Ruiz's right hand man is shocked because now he ain't the head nigga in charge no more. He got to go back to Little old Statics. Ruiz claims his motherfucking spot, bitch. And the meeting begins. So Tommy tells everybody about their plan to sell pills, but that they'll be paying up front. Ain't nobody here for this bullshit. And then steps up to Tommy and says to Tommy, I ain't got no proof, bitch, but I know you killed my son. Then next thing we know, Milan's sitting back like this on the motherfucking couch. All this nigga does is look over there to Eeyore, Igor. And the next thing you know, Igor will come up in behind Chin and grab that nigga by the neck. <laughs> so I choking him with his motherfucking forearm and then this nigga pull out a goddamn shank and stab this nigga in a motherfucking neck and then Chin's dead. Chin and his big bobblehead is on the damn ground dead and Tommy is looking like holy shit. Ghost shits his motherfucking pants. This nigga needs to go get a motherfucking wet wipe immediately. So now Milan is certifying to Tommy that I got your back. You my nigga. I fucks with you. Ain't nobody gonna fuck with you or disrespect you as long as you on my motherfucking good side. This is how life could be for you if you come on over here to the dark side. Father Callahan is sitting there <laughs> and Father Hall Callahan says mother of God. <laughs> Cause Father Callahan don't know what the fuck to do. So ghosts is so damn scared that Ghost goes and take his black ass and sits the fuck down. Because Ghost now realizes that shit is way out of control and he don't have control over nothing. He don't know shit. He don't know what the fuck is going on. Tommy then says, well, all right. Anybody else got a problem? Ghost is sitting there realizing that he is no longer the head nigga in charge. He is no longer the HBIC. He realizes that Tommy is at the top of the food chain at this point and he is just scraping to keep things together and he don't know what the fuck to do with that because he's so used to Tommy being his right hand man being second in command but now Tommy's running everything and I'm like come on Tommy come on Tommy after the meeting Ghost gets into Tommy's car he is shook girlfriend need a nap so he's mad that Tommy gave them their whole courier system and Tommy says we work for Milan right until we don't need to and baby girl I'm in formation I don't know about you but bitch you better get in formation <laughs> like, I'm not trying to die because you want to put your dick out on the table 
So Ghost is sitting there about to cry, literally. And Tommy says to him, Milan is testing you to see how you will react. Get it the fuck together, girl. Pull your panties up, untuck your dick, and act like you got some fucking balls, bitch. And Tommy tells Ghost to straighten out Ruiz because that mouthy motherfucker is going to get all of us killed. Ghost says, I'll straighten it out. I'll handle everything. Keisha and Tasha are at the shop, counting up the money, working on the books and shit, closing up the shop for the night when Milan comes the fuck in. And Tasha looks at him as soon as he walks in like, girl, <laughs> you are motherfucking trying. I'm so sick of you hoes running up on me. I says to her, I am not dangerous to your friend. She does not know who I am, but she does not know who you are either. Tasha says, no, she don't know shit. And it's going to stay that way. Milan look at her like, okay, girl. Okay, bitch, I see you, bitch. You got some balls, bitch. Okay, girl. Then he says, so this is how Tommy is cleaning his money. And as he's saying that, Keisha goes to walk out the back where she sees him talking. So she stops and hides behind the shelf so she can eavesdrop on him up for conversation. So Belon continues on talking to Tasha. He says, and your husband was obviously so honest to tell you about me. Are you so honest with him? Does he know what you really do here? No, but he will if you keep this up. White boy dancing into a weave shop in the middle of the hood? You should go before somebody starts asking questions. Tell your husband to forget his plan to get rid of me or he will force my hand. And then Lakeisha acts like she bumped into something. She's like, oh my God, shit, I'm sorry. What the fuck? Ooh, yeah. Hey girl, how, what's going on up in here? Who is this fine white man? Who is this fine piece of porcelain? Okay. So her and Milan shake hands and Milan exit the building. So Tasha says, that was nice of him. He was just coming by to see if we needed security. And Lakeisha says, cut the bullshit, T. All this crap about wholesaling her and shit, you turning my shop into a drug front? You were never supposed to know. So how could you do this to me? I could lose everything or go to jail. Who's going to take care of my son then? You know what? Get your shit and get the fuck out. I can't, okay? If I stop working here now, he'll know something is up. The only way to protect you is to stay. You gotta promise me you won't tell anybody. I don't have to promise you shit. Like I'm behind me. And then she leaves and I'm like, girl, see this is what you get from going into business with your friend. <laughs> you got to keep business and personal separate. Angela meets up with Greg in the waiting area of her building and she denies to Greg that she knows anything about this leak. She don't know who the fuck the leak is and she ain't the leak. So she kind of being real flirty with him, grabbing his arm and shit. And he looking at her like, bitch, grab my arm again. I'm going to make you grab this dick. So he tells her to prove it and give him something to help him prove who is the leak. Meanwhile, Ghost is outside sitting in his whip watching this whole motherfucking thing go down. And you know he about to slit his wrist because Angela's the love of his life. And Angela's in the face of her ex-boyfriend grabbing on him and shit. And he don't know what the fuck to do about nothing. I'm like, when you gonna learn this bitch is a snake and that she'll give a fuck about nobody but herself? But okay, girl, you wanted this Puerto Rican bitch and her Puerto Rican pussy, now deal with it. So then we see Mike in the parking lot. He texts Hugo to, and he has the money and the passports. So MJ tells Angela that if she wears a wire and get ghost to talk, he and the shooter will get persecuted and not her. Angela says, that's bullshit and you know it. I am not your leak, MJ. And MJ says to her, you know what, girl? Okay, you don't want to cry, I hope you survive this shit, homegirl, because you're doing a lot behind some dick. I know black dick is everything, bitch, but I ain't going to be risking this good blowout behind no nigra. So then we see Ghost, and he's laying on the couch in his office at him and Tasha's crib. He's passed out. And Tasha comes in there saying, Ghost, Ghost, I know you heard me. Wake up. And then he wakes up. And he says, what the fuck, Tasha? The kids saw you come home drunk last night when you were supposed to be watching them. What the fuck were you thinking about, Ghost? You gotta have your mind on right, especially now. I haven't seen you like this in years. I went to a bar last night to do some research. I'm in control, Tasha. I'm gonna get us from out under Milan. I got a plan. Maybe we shouldn't be planning something against him. Maybe with Milan, doing nothing is the right thing to do. Keep us all safe. You have to trust me, Tasha. That's why I went out last night. I needed more information before I can make a move. And then he gets up to go and take a shower. 
Tasha like, I don't give a fuck about what you talking about, homegirl. Uh, I ain't about to get killed by this Serbian nigga behind you and your ego and your pride. So, so she then calls Tommy and leaves Tommy a voicemail message saying, Tommy, Ghost is plotting something against Milan and he's drinking again. Call me back. Then we see Milan eating some old Serbian ass stew. Ask Tommy how Ghost reacted to the meeting at Troop. Tommy tells him he wasn't happy about it, but he got him to come around. Milan says to Tommy, you see how the tables have turned and how he needs you now? I can tell from watching you that it used to be the other way around. Milan tells him how Ghost told Tasha about him and about how he knows that Tommy is still very much connected to Tasha and Ghost and the kids. And he then says to Tommy that all of them being connected only causes pain. And he says, what would your life be like, Tommy, if you had no friends? If you were completely free? I am free. Are you? Or are you still loyal to a man who is not loyal to you? Right now, I bet Ghost is plotting against me. When he knows I will kill the both of you if he tries to make a move. He ain't tell me nothing about no plan. Would he? You know the man. Would he tell you before he made a move? I see potential in you, my friend. You could replace me, but you can't get there as long as you're anchored to ghosts. A man you cannot trust. And I'm like, okay, they're planting the seed for Tommy to turn against ghosts and become his old man. Now it's a will he or won't he? Will he betray ghosts and go up in the ranks of the drug game? Or will he stay loyal to his friend and his family? Then see Ruiz and Ghost at a car wash. And Ruiz asks Ghost why he sent him away. Ghost says he didn't know if he could really trust him. And that he knows he was talking to the feds and almost gave him up despite him saving his life. Ruiz said this is a Puerto Rican chick. She's working for you, right? Ghost ignores everything that he's saying. And tells Ruiz to go to the feds and give them a bigger fish, their new boss, Milan. And Ruiz is looking at him like, nigga, I'm not giving up Milan. You just seen what he did to Chen. I'm not trying to get shanked in the neck. Ruiz says to him, if they put Milan away, I bow out and you become distro. So the wheels in Ruiz's head is turning. And he's trying to figure out, is this something that he wants to do or not? We see Tariq getting out of school. And I'm like, where's Raina? They in the same grade. They supposed to be twins. Wouldn't they be leaving out, going home together? But okay. So Kanan is sitting outside of Tariq's school, sipping on that lean. You know that nigga is addicted. And he asks Tariq if he want to go get something to eat. And I'm looking like, didn't your mama tell you to say no to strangers? Like, so you just getting in cars with motherfuckers you don't know? Okay, nigga, you need to watch some old after school ass specials and shit. So Tariq says yes, he gets in the car and Kanan offers him some lean. And at first he looking like, no, nah, I don't really want to do it. He's like, you act like a little baby. I mean, go ahead and take a little sip. Put some hair on your chest. So Tariq little dumbass take a sip and he's like, mm, this shit don't taste right. So Kanan says to him, you'll get used to it. All the good shit hurts the first time around. And I was like, didn't I tell y'all on last week episode that he was going to get this little nigga strung out? I told y'all he was going to get him strung out. I told y'all. Ghost is in the car waiting on Tommy when his cop friend calls him and gives him the tea on the whole cigarettes and shit. So Tommy pulls up and Milan texts Tommy and says, Tasha friend. I can trust you to take care of it. Tommy says, I got it. And I'm like, oh shit, is Lakeisha about to get shanked? I don't believe so. Ro Timmy, the guy that plays Dre, and Lala were, have both gone to the power offices to discuss season four. So neither one of them are dying this season. So Tommy gets in the car with Ghost and Ghost tells Tommy that he checked Ruiz. Tommy then says to Ghost, if you're working on a plan, you better tell me. This cannot be, this cannot be like the shit that you pulled the last time. Ghost being Ghost says, nope, I ain't got no plan. I don't know his headquarters. I don't know his weak spots. I don't know shit about this nigga. I don't know where he hang out. Do you have any ideas? Tommy, nope. I don't know shit. So here they are, both lying to each other, and you're seeing that they're is a rift between them two. Of course, Tommy knows where Milan's hangout is and where his product is, but he's not telling Ghost this. And Ghost is not telling Tommy that he has a plan to get rid of Milan. So they are both fucking each other over. And 
it takes Tariq back to the old neighborhood. And Tariq is like, my dad never wanted me to come here. And he, Kane is like, fuck that. You know, you need to know where your uh, people came from. He tells Tariq that him and Ghost used to sell coke together. That they was in a gang together. And that he was one of the baddest niggas around. And Tariq says, don't seem like that now. Kane says, want to see some proof? And I was like, Ugh. just a lamb leading to slaughter. I'm like, oh, Lord. So Tasha goes to the shop with a big ass duffel bag and Keisha ain't fucking with her. So she says to Lakeisha, I don't want you to get hurt and I don't know how much time we got so you gotta take this money. What, to shut me up right? Well, how much? Almost 500 G's. Well, let me tell you something. Let me come out of curtains. <laughs> bitch, ain't no more conversation. You give me 500 G's, bitch, you guys worry about me saying a goddamn thing, bitch. You are my BFF for life. You and I will never part my key, da, da. Bitch, Tasha, girl, you can all the free weeds for life. Back into character. You take this, you look the other way. You help me prove to the people I work for that you can be trusted. Keisha, I'm trying to save your life. Are you? What you gonna do if I don't take the money? What you gonna do if you don't? You ain't gonna make it to the cops. I ain't going to no cops. I ain't no fucking snitch. Then take the bag, Keisha. Please. So, Tasha says she's sorry. And Keisha says, I'm sorry too, bitch. I'm sorry too. So, Tasha leaves. And as she's leaving, Lakeisha goes to take the bag into the back. And when she takes the bag into the back, Tommy walks in. And we don't know what the fuck happened. We gotta wait until next week to find out. It would be cute, though. If him and Lakeisha start going together, and then he can have that family that he always wanted. Because, you know, that bitch is desperate for a man. And she got her son. Boom, bam. Ready-made family for Tommy. We see Angela park her car to go pick up some evidence that Ghost told her he was going to drop off for her. But, of course, he tricked her. So, he gets in the car. He asks her, what's going on between you and Greg Knox? No, 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 no. No, no, no. You do not get to ask me that question. We're not friends. We're not lovers. We are just two people that have to help each other in order to stay the fuck out of jail. So he's sitting there like, really, bitch? <laughs> okay. So he gives her Hugo's phone so she can find out who the leak is. And so she asks him, did he fuck Tasha when they was at the hotel together? And he says, no, I slept on the couch. You happy now? And she's like, gosh, I'm so fucking stupid. Just get out, Jamie. Get the fuck out, Jamie. Get out, Jamie, now. So he gets out the car. When he gets out the car, we see that she was wearing a wire the whole time. But she didn't get any information that she could use. So, boom, boom, bow. Kanan takes Tariq back to the old lady crib. But we find out that the old lady crib belongs to the dude named Breeze that him and Ghost used to work for when they was on the street corner together. And we find out that Breeze was killed in that exact same home. Now, we know who killed Breeze ghost mm-hmm so as Tariq is sitting down Tasha texts him like where the fuck are you you need to call me because it's nighttime now and this nigga ain't at home so Kanan is behind Tariq with a gun and his little dumb ass don't know what the fuck is going on so Dre then texts Tariq like where are you at your daddy's gonna kill me so as Kanan has the gun up to the back of his head prepared to kill and shoot him Tariq says man I fucking hate my dad and then that changes everything for Kanan. Kanan puts the gun down and says, I thought that you looked up to him. I thought that, that was like your motherfucking idol or some shit. And Tariq spills all the tea about how his daddy ain't shit and how he cheat on his mama and how he ain't here for that nigga. So Kanan tells him, you know, he played me too. And he asks if he want to help him get his dad back. Tariq says, I mean, yeah. Especially now that I know everything my daddy ever told me about himself was some bullshit. Because now I know who my father really is. And so, Kanan says to him, you can trust me. And there we go, building the trust in between them two. And I just can't wait to see what they're going to do. Expecting to happen is, Kanan uses Tariq to get his father somewhere to set him up. And that's when it's revealed to Ghost that Kanan is alive and that he's not dead. But I told y'all he was going to get to Tariq. That's fucked up. So basically what they're doing is, Ghost took Sean under his wing and basically was a father to his son. So now he's about to return a favor and be a father to his son. I'm going to take your kid away from you like you took my kid away from me. Angela goes over to Greg's crib and he tells her that he figured out who killed Lobos. She says that she's been investigating Ghost too. 
And then she shows him the surveillance footage from the hotel that verifies that he was there with his wife. So she's playing this whole distraught game up like she's so hurt that she got played and wah, 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 wah. So Greg then leans over and kisses her on the mouth. And I was like, I told y'all that they were going to put them back together. I told y'all this episode, what was that, one or two? I told y'all they was going to put them back together. Y'all don't believe me. Okay. So she's like, I think I need to lean. So she gets up to leave and he follows her to the door and he was like, you know what, you know, let me just walk you outside to your car because it's a really bad neighborhood. And so she's standing there frozen still because she thought she got away with it and she was just going to be able to just bounce. So she recollects herself, turns around and pretends to play this old hurt victim shit again. And so she was like, I'm just so cold. I'm just so cold. And so he holds her and grabs her and rubbing her and shit. And then we switch. Goes. At one of them like Serbian bars or whatever. He's pretending to get drunk and shit to find out information about where these cigarettes are coming the fuck from. So then we switch back to Angela. And guess what? Angela is getting her whole entire white mm. back cracked by Greg. Mm. I'm like, this bitch mm. ain't got no problems. Or pop yeah. her pussy for a real nigga. So they fucking the shit out of each other with they two pale asses. It's just like watching two pieces of fucking white bread fuck each other. So... I'm like, girl, all this ain't for the motherfucking case, bitch. You fucking this nigga for the case and because your pussy is wet. Stop with the foolishness. I can't wait for Ghost to find out she fucked Greg. I cannot wait for this nigga to find out she fucked Greg. That's going to kill that nigga. When he find out she fucked Greg, it's going to be a wrap between them two. Because he ain't going to give a fuck about her doing it for the case. Because what's his is what's his. You know, if they keep it real, how men think. Once a man knows his bitch is giving it up to somebody else, he's done with him. Like, he's done with Tasha. When he found out Tasha fucked Sean, that cut everything off for him. Baby, he about to do Angela the same motherfucking way. It is over for them niggas. So, when the bar closes, we see Ghost, and he follows the owner, the old man, to this warehouse. So, now that he knows where Milan's warehouse is, he gets ready to leave when he sees Tommy pull the fuck up. And he looking like, what the fuck is this nigga doing here? He told me he didn't know where Milan's hideouts were. So, he picks up the phone to call Tommy to see if he gonna answer, and Tommy sends him to voicemail. So, now he know, damn... Tommy ain't even got my motherfucker back. I can't trust this nigga. I can't trust nobody at this point. Then we switch back to Angela. She throw on a t-shirt. She go in the bathroom with her purse. And she, we see her pull out her phone. And then we see Greg. He gets up. And when he hears her turn on the shower. He texts Medina. I think Angela's working with St. Patrick. I think we can get them both. Nigga, Greg wasn't fooled by that old stale-ass pussy of hers. He took that pussy, bitch, and got all the information he motherfucking needed. I'm so happy they ain't have Greg being no fucking dummy behind this bitch. Oh, my God, I hope this bitch end up in jail. Oh, my God. Let that bitch go to motherfucking Orange of the New Black Bitches is and get up in there with Tasty and the rest of them bitches. Oh, my God. I hope Angela ass goes to jail. We know she ain't. This episode was really good. It was really informative. It had a lot of shit going on. Um... I was proven right on so many occasions, but whatever. Um, my favorite moment from tonight's episode was when Angela fucked Greg. Because that verified everything about her character for me, that she's a snake. And that she ain't shit. And that Ghost was wrong about her the whole damn time. This porcelain doll that he risked everything for ain't shit. And I was happy about it that it was confirmed. Um... Let me know what was your favorite part of tonight's episode down below. Um, we only got two episodes left, y'all, and this season is over. I don't even know how this is going to end. I hope and pray that they do not get rid of Milan's character anytime soon because I'm living for him. I want to see more of him next season. I want to see it where they end this season with Ghost attempting to edge Milan out and get something over his head, but whatever he gets over Milan's head isn't good enough, and he still is being ran by Milan at the end, and we go into next season with Ghost basically fucked. Like, that's what I want to see. I don't want to see him be able to pull everything together like he did last um, year on last season's episode where they had him kill everybody and come out on top. 
I want to see him fail and be fucked up going into next season and for everybody else to be in a winning position and for him to be fucked. I want him to learn that Angela fucked Greg. I want everything to like fucking just fall down around him. I cannot wait to see what this whole Tariq and Kane thing, how that's going to play out and how uh, Kane is going to use Tariq to get back at Ghost. I really do think that he's going to, you know, like I said, use Tariq to set Ghost up by getting Ghost um, at a specific location and then him popping up and being there instead of Tariq. But, um, oh my God, I just cannot wait to see what's going to happen with Tariq. I wonder if he's going to die still. They might still kill him off. There's still a possibility that he might die. He's going to get hooked on Wayne. That's going to be everything. Oh my God, I just feel so sorry for the little boy. Oh, rest in peace, Tariq. <laughs> Thumbs up this video. Make sure to share this on all your social media accounts. Make sure to hashtag PowerTV if you retweet this on Twitter. I have a new episode of Since You Asked coming up this Wednesday. If you have a question for us about love, sex, relationships, your career, whatever, send us an email at sinceyouasked1 at gmail.com. The show is everything I feel with me and my best friend. We give advice to my viewers. It is hilarious. You must check it out. I also have several product reviews right now. I have a product review on this hard candy cosmetic palette that I was sent. And I'll be going to see Beyonce this Saturday, September 10th. So, for all of my Beyonce viewers that love my Beyonce videos, be looking out for my Beyonce Formation Tour review video. I'll have footage from the concert and everything. Be getting ready. You see me go there. Everything. So, be looking out for that. I cannot wait to see Mother V next week. I'm so excited. Um, I love you all. I'll read all the comments. I'll leave your comments below. And I will see you all next week on my next review. Love you and have a great week. Bye. Oh, but before I go... <laughs> Let me get a close-up of tonight's beat because I have not did a beat face for you all in the last couple of weeks. So I did this really pretty like reddish burgundy eye with a really dramatic wing and some sparkly glitter on the inner corner of my eyes. Put them eyebrows. Arched, bitch. Love y'all. Have a safe week. Bye. You have to trust me, Sasha. That's why I went out last night. I needed more information before I can make a move. And then he gets up to go and take a shower. And then he gets up to go and take a shower. Tasha like, I don't give a fuck about what you talking about, homegirl. <clears throat> I ain't about to get killed by this Serbian nigga behind you and your ego and your pride. So she then texts Tommy. So she then calls Tommy and leaves Tommy a voicemail message saying, Tommy, Ghost is plotting something against Milan and he's drinking again. Call me back. So then we see Milan eating some old Serbian ass stew. Look like some motherfucking Chef Boy R D bullshit. He asked Tommy if he wants something, man. Me and Tommy was like, uh, no, ma'am. So he asked Tommy how Ghost reacted to the meeting at Truth. Tommy tells him he wasn't happy about it, but he got him to come around. Milan says to Tommy, You see how the tables have turned and how he needs you now? I can tell from watching you that it used to be the other way around. Milan tells him how Ghost told Tasha about him and about how he knows that Tommy is still very much connected to Tasha and Ghost and the kids. And he then says to Tommy that all of them being connected only causes pain. And he says, what would you, what would your life be like, Tommy, if you had no friends? If you were completely free. I am free. Are you? Or are you still loyal to a man who is not loyal to you? Right now I bet. Right now I bet Ghost is plotting against me. When he knows I will kill the both of you. If he tries to make a move. When he knows I will kill the both of you. If you pri When he knows I will kill the both of you. If he tries to make a move. He ain't tell me nothing about no plan. Would he? You know the man. Would he tell you before he made a move? I see potential in you, my friend. You could replace me, but you can't get out. But you can't get there as long as you're anchored to ghosts. A man you cannot trust. And I'm like, okay, they're planting the seed for Tommy to turn against ghosts and become his own man. Now it's a will he or won't he? Will he betray ghosts and go up in the ranks of the drug game? Or will he stay loyal to his friend and his family? 
I think that he's going to stay loyal. But then again, I still think, I think for right now, Tommy's going to stay loyal until otherwise. We then see Ruiz and Ghost at a car wash, and Ruiz asks Ghost why he sent him away. Ghost says he didn't know if he could really trust him, and that he knows he was talking to the feds and almost gave him up despite him saving his life. Ruiz said this is a Puerto Rican chick. She's working for you, right? Ghost ignores everything that he's saying and tells Ruiz to go to the feds and give them a bigger fish, their new boss, Milan. And Ruiz is looking at him like, nigga, I'm not giving up Milan. You just seen what he did to Chen. I'm not trying to get shanked in the neck because you want to think that you, because of you, nigga. No way. Ghost then says to him, if they put Milan away, I bow out and you become distro. So the wheels in Ruiz's head is turning and he's trying to figure out, is this something that he wants to do or not? We see Tariq getting out of school. And I'm like, where's Raina? They in the same grade. They supposed to be twins. Wouldn't they be leaving out? Going in, going home together? But okay. So Kanan is sitting outside of Tariq's school. Sipping on that lane. You know that nigga is addicted. And he asks Tariq if he want to go get something to eat. And I'm looking like, didn't your mama tell you to say no to strangers? Like, so you just getting in cars with motherfuckers you don't know? Okay, nigga, you need to watch some old after-school ass specials and shit. So Tariq says yes, he gets in the car, and Kanan offers him some lean. And at first he looking like, no, nah, I don't really want to do it. He's like, you act like a little baby? I mean, go ahead and take a little sip. Put some hair on your chest. So Tariq little dumbass take a sip, and he's like, mm, this shit don't taste right. And so Tariq... And so, Kanan says to him, you'll get used to it. All the good shit hurts the first time around. And I was like, didn't I tell y'all on last week episode that he was going to get this little nigga strung out? I told y'all he was going to get him strung out. I told y'all. <clears throat> Ghost is in the car waiting on Tommy when his cop friend calls him and gives him the tea on the whole cigarettes and shit. So Tommy pulls up and Milan texts Tommy and says, Tasha friend, I can trust you to take care of it. Tommy says, I got it. And I'm like, oh shit, is Lakeisha about to get shanked? I don't believe so. I don't think they're going to kill her character off because Ro Timmy, the guy that plays Dre and Lala were, have both gone to the power offices to discuss season four. So they'll be back season four. Neither one of them are dying Neither one of them are dying this season. So, Tommy gets in the car with Ghost, and Ghost tells Tommy that he checked Ruiz. Tommy then says to Ghost, if you're working on a plan, you better tell me. This cannot be, this cannot be like the shit that you pulled the last time. Ghost being Ghost says, nope, I ain't got no plan. I don't know his headquarters. I don't know his weak spots. I don't know shit about this nigga. I don't know where he hang out. Do you have any ideas? Tommy, nope. I don't know shit. So here they are, both lying to each other, and you're seeing that there is a rift between them two. Of course, Tommy knows where Milan's hangout, where Milan's hangout is and where his product is, but he's not telling Ghost this. And Ghost is not telling Tommy that he has a plan to get rid of Milan. So they are both fucking each other over. Kanan takes Tariq back to the old neighborhood and Tariq is like, my dad never wanted me to come here. And he, Kanan's like, fuck that. You know, you need to know where your uh, people came from. He tells Tariq that him and Ghost used to sell coke together, that they was in a gang together and that he was one of the baddest niggas around. And Tariq says, don't seem like that now. Kanan says, want to see some proof? And I was like, Ugh. just a lamb leading to slaughter. I'm like, oh Lord. So Tasha goes to the shop with a big ass duffel bag and Lakeisha ain't fucking with her. So she says to Lakeisha, I don't want you to get hurt and I don't know 